Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Hayoki model 3182 digital power high tester RMS. And um, by looking at the front here, I think most of the features uh, gives quite a lot of uh, sense, obviously. Um, we can change the range of the AC volts, 200 or 250, which is a little bit weird. Shouldn't it have, well, it can of course measure 115, obviously, in this, or it can also do it in the other range, right? So I don't understand exactly why that makes any sense. The current range, of course, makes a lot of sense, right? So it's 2 amps or 20 amps for full range. And the watts is 200 or 2000 for the high or low range. So all that is uh, pretty easy to understand. It's because it's uh, the meter is only 200 counts, I think. And then there's maybe a decimal. But there's you can see here is a 1. And then we got yeah three full-blown digits, right? So it's not a super high resolution uh, LED display and it only displays one of the volts, amps or watts at the same time. Well, it one, one at a time, right? So you have to select this one or that one or that one. So that is how the display works. The fun thing is that I didn't get this at first uh, by looking at the instrument. I had to look in the manual to figure out what is going on here. And you're probably going to uh, be as confused as I were. Like, look at that. Out, put. <laughs> With a space. Well, well. So channel one, two, three. Hmm. What is the point? Let's think about it. <laughs> I've been looking at the manual, so I can tell you channel one is the volts and then it's the amps and then it's the watts. So the idea is you put three external voltmeters and then you will get the three measurements simultaneously on your external readouts. That is the idea. Why not write it here, volts and amps and watts? How crazy is this? So here's the rear side. I think I forgot to say this instrument is from 1986. So definitely I need to open it and inspect it before plucking this into uh, mains. It is, as you can see, a single phase instrument. So we've got a source and the load. And we got some grounds so you can uh, have your earth and all that. And uh, then there's a data output. And that connector is the same as the IEEE, but it is not IEEE. This is a, a BCD data output. And it is really good explained in the manual uh, what is what here. And the idea is you connect the output from this one to a, a, a converter unit that converts this a BCD format. It is actually just the uh, display directly multiplexed format. Um, and then you convert this into an IEEE format where with an external box you need to buy. I even got the manual with this instrument. And of course this is from 1986, so it is a little bit dirty and nasty. But I just wanted to show a few details, especially, oh, that's difficult to, let's get some light here. So this is what I figured out. The three channels of analog output for voltage, current and power are available simultaneously. And you can also have this uh, adapter. Okay, and uh, then it says a little bit here about the display readout. 
it's a three and a half and it can maximum display this 1999 okay we got two this manual covers two different models they got the this is the one i got the 3182 and the difference that is the power range so this is 200 watts or 2000 watts and the other one is uh, only 20 watts 200 watts the fun thing about this manual is you can you can actually go to Hayoki. This uh, page is uh, still available, and you can download this manual in a high quality PDF. So that's uh, absolutely fantastic. See here is the principle of operation. So I think we will have these transformers internally in the unit. So this is how we get the isolation, and it measures, of course, the input voltage and the output current via two transformers, and then it measures everything here and uh, displays everything on the display. So in my manual, it's also explained uh, how to connect everything here, power line, and then your load. So if you do it exactly like this with two wires like that, then you can, of course, measure both the voltage and the current to your load. <laughs> There's even a little hand-drawn explainer here how it's uh, doing this inside. And uh, there is a little weird ex other explainer here about how you can also connect stuff. And this is, uh, this is a little bit weird. I think this is uh, because if you want your voltage to go to your load, then okay, you need this way to measure the voltage, but then current still goes through the unit like that. So you can also do it like this for some reason. And what else did I find uh, interesting in the, the manual? Yes, uh, earlier I talked about the, the display. So the display is just the BCD format to the internal display. And that goes uh, via this connector on the back to an external box that converts it into IEEE if you want this. So the connector of this unit here um, is of course the display data, the select signals for the different uh, segments and a uh, clock. I think it is also explained really, really good here. Maybe I should put the pictures from the manual, if, yeah, from the PDF in here so it's easier to read what is going on. But they really made it so anybody could easily make their own little, oops, annoying. So they could make their own little um, interface for this uh, unit. So a digital interface is good for recording what is going on, obviously, instead of just having a, an in analog interface, then you can just, okay, you could, of course, record the analog stuff. So let's look inside. It is very, very well built, super clean, and everything is just yeah exactly how you should do this. I'm a little bit impressed, to be honest. How many trimmers can we find? I mean, look at that. It is full of trimmers under those plug-in boards. I don't know if you can see this, but I see here, down, here's another one. You can't reach these two trimmers, and here it's the same problem. Also some trimmers under the other plug-in boards. So obviously you need to trim something under here before you put in the plug-in boards. Hmm, that is weird. And over here some more. I don't know, it's crazy how many trimmers. So the first thing I check for, that will be all the capacitors here for leaks and all that. So perfectly fine, we don't have any leaks. And uh, that will be the current transformer. So we've got two windings through here and it shows exactly what we're supposed to, to see uh, from the manual. We can also see this is um, the current path. And then here's the 
voltage from the input to the output. That's just a wire through here. And then we have a wire like that one that is connected to the input voltage. And it goes, of course, to the voltage transformer. And then the output from the voltage transformer here goes to the little circuit right here. The yellow wire here is the output from the current transformer. And we are, yeah, we got uh, three voltage regulators. So it's also running on negative voltage. The main chip, well, well this, this chip is the analog to digital converter. It's actually a full digital multimeter in one chip. So um, it takes the analog input and it converts it into the three digits directly. So you can put in your seven segments. So here we've got the seven segments. It's got some... Uh, high power drivers for the seven segments and then it's connected via a four bit bus for the data and then four select signals and all those comes directly from that chip. Another thing that I note, that will be the connectors. See, uh, here we got three pins, four pins. So you can't swap these around and that will be the analog outputs the individual analog outputs that goes to the front panel and of course the same analog outputs also go to the rear mounted connector where you can of course have an analog or digital interface to all this and all the other connectors more or less see it's the same you can't really swap these around and mess things up. It's all made for anti-stupid. But there's just one place where you can do it wrong, and that is the voltage and current measurements. And uh, I think if you pull everything apart here and mess around with this, it's actually easy to mess this up because the voltage transformer is to the right, and the current transformer is mounted to the left. But see? The two signals there are current here and the voltage there. So that is, uh, it could be messed up. So I took away my two little op amp circuits like that and I marked them. So, but see this little number two here? That is the original marking on them. And uh, so I put in a little number eight and a little number nine for the connector there, CN8, and this one is CN9. So this way I'm not going to swap those two boards. <laughs> How many trimmers have you got? I think it's absolutely crazy. I just counted all the trimmers all together. It's 22 trimmers. So I really hope it works because how why figure out what to do here and what, how to trim this or trim that? So, well, I find no reason for not powering this unit up. So let's try and do that. What kind of a setup have I gotten myself into? So the idea is that all those six bulbs, they are connected to the output and um, I had, they are loose in the sockets. So... I think nothing is uh, connected. We got three uh, voltmeters connected to the three outputs, and uh, that will be the AC input, right? So if I turn this on, and uh, I can crank up the mains voltage. So let's just uh, go for something. Well, it doesn't really matter where we are. So this is 48 input. So the DC voltage out of this one says 48.6 volts input. And uh, so that was 48, 48. And here we are now in the high range. So if I go to the low range, it's 48.2. So I think the voltmeter is good for so far, right? So let's crank up the voltage. So 
So we are now in the 200 volt range. And uh, yeah, I'm just below the maximum, right? So this is 198 points, something like that, right? I mean, this is close enough, isn't it? So I need to go to the higher range and then I can go up to 230. That is what we have here. And that means when this um, transformer here is set for the input voltage is the same as the output voltage, that means it's not losing anything and I have the possibility to load it with a lot of amps. So 230 on this meter is 232 on that output and it reads 232 on that one. Alrighty then. So what we could do is change to um, the amp meter, right? And yeah, okay, so it moves the, the amp. So what if I turn on one of the bulbs? we get the current. So the current is 0 0.25. And uh, that is also correct here. And the, that will be the power. So it's uh, what, 59 watts? I get 58. And uh, we're now in the current is 250. I mean, it's amazing. Let's go to the watts. And it's 58.8. <laughs> I am very, very impressed. I must say, it's that accurate, really? So how about we crank up the, the watts? Ooh, scary. I don't know if this is the most intelligent way to, um, to switch on the watts. So at the moment, I'm pulling 303, and um, 303. Let's see, it's still 303, and this one says uh, 309, 8 maybe, and 307. Oh, that is lovely. I'm really, really happy about this unit. I'm constantly thinking about what can I use this for? As, as you see here, there's a little thing that ignores me a little bit. That will be the LEDs here. See, because they are located that far away from the screen, so when you move your angle of view, the LED moves a lot like that. So what I want to do is modify this instrument a little bit, move the three LEDs here, a lot closer to the glass and then that is going to be solved. It doesn't uh, really annoy me the digits they are really really deep into the instrument. I'm not gonna go all the way up here anyway. What a nice instrument.